This is the video help tutorial screen for purchase screen. And we're going to go through the information that is uh, included in this screen starting at the top. You have a quick button to go to the sales uh, screen, the customer screen, or the store location. Store location is where you're actually picking the store for whoever is making the purchase. In this case, if you had multiple stores, the purchase order would be going to whatever store you're ordering the parts for or materials. In this case, there's a drop-down list that gives you the stores, and I only have two of them in there right now, but you'd pick whatever store is actually the one that is uh, for this purchase order. When you do a new purchase order, you're going to have to go over to the Do Action menu and click on New Record, and that'll give you a new blank record without any data in it, and then you can go ahead and add that information as you're going. Let's go back up here. You'll see that it has a uh, PO ID number that's assigned by the computer. So every time you add a new PO number or new purchase order, it's going to cycle the next number in the order. Let's take a look at the lower part of the screen. In the purchase uh, product purchase order information, there are three tabs, and this particular tab is for the purchase data you have in here for purchase track and purchase portal, which I'll cover before we're done in this tutorial. So let's go. The first item you would do in this screen is to go to the Purchase Data tab and pick a vendor. Uh, in this case, I did not include the address and information in the screen for the, for the supp uh, supplier, but if you're going in and you want to go to the supplier screen, you can go to that screen and add the information for a number of vendors that you want, and then they'd be listed here in the pull down, and it would show you the full information uh, for the address and city, state, and so forth for the, uh, for the vendor itself. The vendor's PO number is also included here. Uh, if you create all the information in the supplier information, the sales uh, for number would be there. And if you have up to three contacts, you also have the uh, email address and also the date that you actually created the uh, purchase for the PO date that you'll be tracking back on. You also have a button here. If you put a URL for the website for the vendor, clicking this button will take you to their website. And in your web, their website, you have the options to check for product, product information, and their current pricing for whatever it may be. Let's take a look at the actual portal here. This portal is the purchase portal where you're adding individual products that are going to be purchased from this vendor on this date. Now, when you go ahead and add the information, you can click here. It'll bring up the actual products. You click that, and you have the option if it drops in here or and or you can go out actually and pick the actual products that are out there also from the list on the drop down. This takes a tap on the iPad or phone to, to open these. They are in scrollers, but if you jump over to the actual screen for things like, for example, the supplier, you can view all the suppliers and make, make edits there without having to uh, try to make changes in this area over here. And actually, the only time you want to make changes is if you're updating a telephone number or a contact. And you can also do that in the store location screen by clicking up here on the store location uh, button at the top of the screen. So let's walk through some of the things we're here. Product we put in, product name, the quantity of items that you're purchasing, the purchase cost from the vendor. This is not the sell price. This is the vendor order cost. This will be calculated. This times this gives you the actual subtotal. That also will average over the many times that you purchase this for by record by record of this item it will give you an average price that you're buying from this vendor. So you can compare price uh, that you're paying for the vendor materials through all the different vendors. It also has a shipping cost. If you want to add that in there, you can put the shipping cost. You put the date receipt from the purchase uh, shipper uh, from the supplier when you get it. That would be the date you actually receive it. And then you put the quantity received. It should match your quantity that you ordered. If it does not match, and the total here is incorrect because it doesn't match, you may need to do out an RMA where you go back to the vendor and ask them if they short shipped or if there was some damage to an item when you received it. You would go here and, and issue an RMA or get one from the vendor to send the item back. So if you have an RMA that you're going to do, you put the yes, or the yes in here. If it's not, or and you can just put done when it's concluded. And we'll be talking about the screen where you're actually working on this information. This is the subtotal for all the items that have been purchased. And this is the sum of quantity that was uh, shorted. And then this is the full cost for all the items that have actually been received. Let's go up and look at the 
purchase tracking information tab. This will bring all the information over in this screen that was in the last tab. And then you have the ability to go in here and drop in uh, information about this particular purchase order and supplier notes. There may be some things in there that you've told them where you have specific requirements that they're going to supposed to send in a certain way or at a time or a date or whatever. You would add that to the notes. This is the purchase portal payment screen. It'll bring over the same information on these two tabs so you can recognize what you're actually working on. And you can re, uh, go down to this thing and look at the PO ID, the PO payment date, the PO payment amount that's due, the amount you've actually paid, and the balance if there is any, and how you paid it. Now you have the ability, if you get a short ship or you have an RMA item, to go ahead on this purchase order and pay for only what you received. So if you ordered three and you got two, you would reduce the amount by one in the quantity of received, and it's going to show a short ship in the, in the amount of received. And then you could track your uh, purchase portal uh, information for the uh, stuff that's outstanding from the supplier. Let's go up here and we're going to actually go to the next screen, which is the purchase list view. And what this is going to do in this screen, and let me go ahead and say over here, go, if you don't see everything that's supposed to be in there, I'm going to recap and tell you that you can click on the show all records. And if there are any items missing in here, the show all will bring them up. And that's normally due that you have done a, a find and performed the find, and you have a records in selection that are less than the full quantity of records that are in the database. So you'd bring them all back in. And of course, you can do a find, and this is a very good time to talk about finds. If you had a number of records and you wanted to find them either by the purchase order date or and or the store that it was ordered for or the actual PO ID or the subtotal or grand total for that particular item, you can go ahead and do the find for any of those things and bring up the records for that. Let's go over here and go to the next item, which is the portal itself. This is the purchase portal uh, record for the purchase store information where we're looking at more product information as far as an RMA is concerned in this case. And this is the individual record as opposed to having all the records for one purchase order. So you can come over here and look at one of those specific items that you want to edit and why. And in this case, if it's related to an RMA, you could put the part number for the vendor's RMA in here and go ahead and add that. You would add why it's being returned in this case, the RMA number would be put in here, the RM, RMA date, the quantity that uh, you are sending back. It'll automatically calculate the, the purchase value of that by taking the quantity and the price and putting the balance that is owed to you. You could put a status in here as to what the status is. You know, is it going to be replaced and whatever it is as far as the status of the item, or they're going to ship you another one. The RMA quantity received is the one that will adjust this value up here. Rather than the ones that are short on the quantity, this will recalculate the amount that's due to you and then put that amount up there. And then the RMA date, this is the items when you receive them back, and the amount will be calculated for the total of the RMA that you should be getting money back if they don't return it to you. You can put RMA notes over here so that you have the information about the RMA and you're tracking on it and following up on it. You should also put and make sure that they have the RMA date in here and it's the correct date for when you posted the RMA to the vendor. Let's go to the next item. The purchase uh, product report, pretty straightforward. For every item that you have in the system for a product order, you're going to have the item by the item product in this case, all the times that this thing has ever been purchased, you would see that particular product with its name at the top, the stores that it was ordered by, and the product information down here below that you would use in a find in order to find records. Now you can always find by the product and every store that it was in where it was ever ordered, or you can do it by the store and or the supplier or and or the uh, order store that was over here, the store that ordered it. You can go by date. You can go by date received or quantity received. These are All these items are used to find a particular record that you're looking for. Uh, the sum of quantity purchased is going to be in here so you can see the sum for the quantity purchased. And then over here, if you're running the report and you do a find, 
the chances are the top two items up here won't be showing. What you would do is click this and it will return the two top record items that show you what items you're working with at the top of record. You can omit records in here and show the omitted. By clicking this, it'll remove this record if you didn't want it in there. And then you can reverse it by showing only the omitted by clicking on this item here. So, and then in this each record, it's going to have a subtotal for a subsummary for each item. Every time it's ordered, it'll keep on showing you the, the subsummary for all the items that were, were ordered from here in the sum total. And then you'll get a grand total for the report down here. Depending upon what records are in selection, when you do a find by going up to do action find, that will, in, uh, that will include all the records that are in selection, not all the records in the database. Now, if you show all the records, this is going to be the sum for all the records in the grand total. So you can see, for example, it broke at this point with the double lines. This would be a separate item. This would be a separate item as far as the way it calculates and brings things in. And of course, it would put the header at the top for each new item in the record keeping so you would know. Now, I did leave some data out of here. I did not put the stores in these. If they had the stores in there and the actual record, they would show up in this screen. Now, clicking in there, it will not actually drop in the store. You shouldn't be editing in this screen. It should be there in case you need to. And when you do a find, uh, you, should, you can copy this. And, and then when you do the find, paste it back into the row. For example, if I wanted to see the store here, I could click in, go ahead and copy it, and then go ahead and paste it into uh, in the iPad. When you hold your th thumb or finger down on it, it will give you the ability to do a copy. And then you can go ahead and copy it and put it into a find by start find and then put it back in that field, or in this case, it would be in the actual field over here <clears throat> for the store, and then it would find it. Because during a find, these two fields cannot be accessed, so you would use the store ordering uh, find field here for the store that you would paste back in. OK, so that covers that. Let's move on. What we're looking at here is the store uh, product report by store. This is a little bit different. And what this is doing is it's showing all the products by the store. And you can do finds again, depending upon the data and how you want to uh, see the information. Like this, in this case, is showing all the dust destroyer uh, things that are in there. And this is the 123 product. And you can go search by store and see all the products for all the store. And once again, you can go in. And because this is by store, you're looking more for what's been selling. And maybe it has a, a summary amount for a particular uh, date or time period. Now, what you can do is you can actually do the find in the actual records before you actually come into that screen here. And what that'll do is it'll present the records after you've done the find for where you've done the find in the actual of individual records. So if I did a find in the, in the actual portal, then came over here, this is what you'd be able to view as the records that you selected and put into the selection within this screen. And of course, you can always click on the run record again to bring back the headers if you do a find in this screen. Once again, you have the omit show those and actually omit records here. Then you have quick uh, access buttons at the top for purchase customer and store location. Let's go to the next item. In this case now, what we're talking is the supplier screen. These are where you add suppliers for your uh, where you purchase items. And these are the fields that I was using that you would fill in. So you have the information for this particular uh, vendor. And you can also access their website through this screen. And you can put comments about the vendor that are more generally about the, the vendor himself and not the items that you're purchasing. So that would be in there. Back up to the top of the screen. And here's the suppliers list view. So you can see how many vendors you have. Right now, there's only two suppliers in the application. And I don't think I have them both in there. I could do a show all to show them all. And then you click the supplier screen thing here to come back into the supplier for the specific record you're viewing. Now, only the, the ones that are in here are example records in which you would do is overwrite the records in here. Keep Don't delete them. Just overwrite them and put your own information in here so that you have your information rather than the example information that I've added. Clicking over here, you do not add new records. Oh, pardon me. You do add new records here using the new record button to add a new uh, supplier to this area. Uh, you don't do it from the other screens. You're adding them here. That concludes all the items in the purchase area. 
And if you have any questions or you need to a little help, you can get live help by contacting us through the developer website. Either chat uh, when you get on the website or if we're not there, you can always uh, send an email and ask us to contact you and do a live demonstration of anything you need help on. Thank you.